Whoa, what's with, go back, what's with the anemones in jail? Those are some nice looking nems. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. GSP wall. I've been waiting to see those actually in action. Certainly I've heard about them. And people are like, yeah, I'm gonna let this grow on on the back overflow, but this guy's actually doing it. And it's like one third of the way grown in. That's kind of cool, I'll have to admit. And he's got a standing wave in this thing. It's been a while since I've seen a standing wave in a tank. That uh, brings back the old days of all about setting up a standing wave. Looks like we got some hydras with an aquatic life hybrid on this thing, all suspended over the tank. Like the T5s next to the LEDs, simply for another type of light, a flatter uh, light. Not that these hydras couldn't get the job done, uh, but just a little different way to set up lights, especially for your SPS heads. Lots of SPS in this thing. Looks like a pretty mixed reef. Good mixed reef here as well. Got a nice Zoa cave there. Oh, back to the NEMS. Why are the NEMS in jail? If you want to sell those things, let me know. I got a client who would love them. Those are some good looking bubble tip, rose bubble tips there. Got an orchid dotty back, one of my favorite fish. Nice little Zoa garden. Maybe the orchid lives in the Zoa garden. That would be a bonus. I dig that. Royal Grama here. Lots of sticks which is nice to see. It's a mixed reef, lots of small sticks. I call that the fun stage of the tank because things are just growing in. You can see a lot of growth very quickly because they seem to grow very fast because when it goes from one inch to two inch, it seems like it's going. Then when it goes from eight inches to you know 10 inches, it doesn't seem to grow as much. So this tank is starting to come into itself. I'm digging the mix of fish too. Certainly got my eyes on the coral, but we've got chromis here. We've got some leopard wrasses, cleaner wrasses, Pintail wrasses, it's a nice mix of tangs. Uh, plenty of fish to keep me interested as well as all the sticks, which I know they don't move. Nothing wrong with that though. Different strokes for different folks. All right, I'm digging the leopards. Another, I mean, I'm like back between the corals and the fish and the corals and the fish. All right, let's speed up here because I'm seeing lots of corals, but I'm also, look at this. He's got a blue throat trigger in here. Again, the pintail wrasse is back, the uh, naso tang. It's got plenty of real estate to grow more SPS as well. Looks like this guy's an SPS head. I'm loving the mixed reef too. We've got some nice torches there on the bottom, nice Aussie gold and Indo gold here. I'm loving the Ghani uh, garden there. We got a peek at a jawfish there. Hopefully he comes back to that guy. Uh, those are cool. The Ghanis look really nice and fluffy and healthy. We got some reds, some purples, some greens. Love the Ghanapora garden. Definitely one of my favorite corals. Usually don't grow fast, but that's okay. Everything doesn't have to grow fast in your tank for you to enjoy it. Got some interesting uh, Cephastrias. Looks like a Mani and Crusty Mani on the overflow. This guy is definitely all about stuff growing on the back of the tank and the overflow besides just Coraline, which is fun. It's a different thing to see. Some people like to grow stuff on the back of the tank. Some people don't. It's a nice change for me. Personally, I like to have the back of the tank just go with Coraline, but you know, that's one place to put GSP. Just hope it doesn't get over onto the rocks. We've got some GSP islands. It's like Pangea breaking up of GSP in the back there. Linkia starfish. Wonder how hard, how long he's had this guy. My experience with Linkias is usually they don't do really well, but hopefully this, he's had this guy for a while. We've got the Mani cap. Like this placement on the Mani back there. There's plenty of real estate for it to expand. You're probably not going to put anything back there anyway. Like what are you going to put next to the overflow? down low back there. Probably not much, so why not put a big plating money above it and let it grow? So not a huge fan of plating money because they do tend to take over, but I would say that's really good placement if you're gonna put one in the tank. Got some digi up front, keep an eye on that. That stuff can be invasive. Maybe a little bit of a Cali tort down there, just got a shot at that stick of it. All kinds of SPS that are encrusted and starting to really look healthy on this tank. We come back in a year, this thing's gonna be stuffed full of SPS. Would love to get in there and do some fragging when this thing's grown out. I uh, got some clowns here in the anemones, which is always a nice thing to see. These tangs just are not going to get out of the way for the camera. The uh, naso tang here is showing off the rear end. Lots to keep me interested in this tank. Lots of good flow, lots of good motion with the soft corals. We have hard corals, lots of fish, a good variety of fish here. We've got a copper band sneaking in there as well. Back to the pintails. I could stare at this thing. Uh, all day long. Definitely a lot to look at, definitely a lot to take in, but a good variety of things um, between the fish and the coral. I'm just, I could just hit replay for this and say nothing and be totally happy with it. I'm really digging the mix. 
about um, the fish and the coral. I'm just going to take a moment and enjoy this thing while we're uh, rocking and rolling with the camera angle as well. There goes the leopards, a couple leopard wrasses, which is fun to see. I always like trios of those guys. Got a black tang. Looks like we got a gem tang in here too. This guy likes wrasses and he likes uh, tangs as well. Got a nice chorus wrasse there doing his thing, moving stuff around. You know, I dig it. This is just a fun ex example of the saltwater tank hobby with lots of fish, lots of coral, uh, mixing everything up, getting the best of all the worlds with this. Mimic Tang, I mean, what? Oh, there's an even Mandarin in the back. He looks fat and happy. That's cool to see. Fish, yes, a lot of the fish want attention. Oh, there's a jawfish. What's up, buddy? Peeking his little head out. Love those guys. This is the uh, blue spot hanging out in his little home. Now, personally, the substrate's a little rocky for me. These uh, bigger pieces of rock may be from shells that are broken up or pieces that this uh, jawfish has moved around to his home. Given that he has the leopard rasses and the jaws, I would personally go with a little different aragonite. But if everything's happy in this case, then I would leave it be. I certainly wouldn't tear apart this tank uh, to get their aragonite out there. I just might have gone something with something different uh, there in the get-go. We've got some AK and Kanadas up front. That is one mean ass coral. Certainly keep them away from everything because whatever they touch they're going to destroy. Keeping them up front is a, a good placement uh, for those guys. Oh look another jawfish. Little pearly jaw poking his head out there. This is about as mixed of a reef not only with fish and coral I think as we've seen on the Mr. Saltwater Tank React show and the invertebrates as well. Really a nice balanced ecosystem here. All right around to the equipment side. He's got a little apex here hiding out on the side next to the window. Looks like he's got his two-part there uh, in various containers. Given the growth that he's going to have going on, he's probably going to want to up those in time because he's going to blow through that two-part two as this tank gets grown in. Looks like he's got one of those fish traps uh, for catching fish. Wonder what he's actually caught in there and how it's working. Oh, we're going to spy on the neighbors. Look out. Here we go. Oh, a mixing station outside. Now, those are translucent containers. Looks like he's got a brood as well. Wondering how the algae growth is with those guys outside. We're gonna let in some light, you're gonna get some algae growth with them. Maybe worth it. Really curious to see how bad, if any, the algae growth is in those guys. There we go, it looks like we got one for RO and one for saltwater. This guy likes peeking in on his mixing station. All kinds of gear. I like how he's got the Apex stuff off to the side. This keeps it out from under the stand where it's uh, less prone to get water damage on this thing. And now uh, we're gonna go for a peek underneath the hood here. Let's see, we got more, all kinds of dosing things. It's a pretty good mix of dosing, uh, dosing some bacteria in here as well. Seeing some coral food, you all know how I feel about that. But if it's uh, working for them, then certainly continue it. Uh, I like how everything is all here, contained right next to the tank. It's a nice little a compact setup, showing that you don't have to have a big fish room to get organization and lots of stuff around your tank done. Seen some Dr. Tim's Waste Away. I like that stuff for busting up organics in the tank. Uh, got some test kits over there. Battery backup in the back for the Vortex. Always good to have backup. Looks like he's got an APC, probably backing up the Apex, maybe his return pump as well. This guy's done some good thinking about this, keeping things well prepared. Trident here, uh, some advanced backup on the temperature control as well. Sure, I do a little something with cord wrangling, but cord wrangling always seems to be one of those things that gets away from you. And as soon as you get it set, you add something else and everything changes again. We got some fans over the sump here, keeping things cool. It's a nice compact way to cool things off. Certainly in this case, since the tank is rimless, so he doesn't want to put those over the top of the tank. He's blowing that down on the sump, probably getting his cooling needs done. The little frag tank down in the sump, uh, more frags. This guy's got coral galore in clownfish down there. A nice clam, looks like that's a scully too. Using a little bit of his uh, refugium or a sump there uh, for a frag tank. Dang, he's got all kinds of frags. Get some of the stuff up in the tank, man. Unless you fragged it and now it's down in here to grow out. But you got nice power binkies there, uh, some blastos. Look, get those things up in the display. Let's see those things up there in that beautiful display tank of yours. Um, but I'm digging that he's got a frag tank built in. He's having so much success that he's wanting to have a frag tank. Always like seeing that in the hobby. 
media reactor here in the back next to the skimmer. Uh, I would personally like to have one. He's probably got GFO and carbon mixed in there. I like to have separate chambers for GFO and carbon. Given this guy's compact footprint, he may be doing the best uh, with what he has. Got a protein skimmer next to it. I wonder what's with this white thing. Let's see if we can fast forward here and get over to this white bucket. There we go. What is this? Looks like it's got a light on it. It's a five gallon bucket that's sunk into his sump. I'm gonna maybe come over there in just a second. There we go. There's a return pump. It's got some media there. Another fan blowing things around with uh, Neptune Systems top off. There we go. So I don't know how he got that thing in there. He certainly didn't take this thing, doesn't take this thing out because uh, it's packed back in there. I hope he never has to clean it because uh, it is definitely stuffed. Looks like he's got a line in on the left, another line over there. Hopefully one of those is an emergency with some nice uniseals make for compact plumbing. Oh, it's a refugium in a five gallon bucket in a sump. It's working for the guy. Look, he's got all kinds of potato growth in there. It's keeping the light contained so his sump doesn't get overgrown with different types of algae from the refugium light. I just hate to think about cleaning that thing, like deep cleaning, like having to get that thing out. If you're just reaching in to grab chato and ripping out, that's one thing, but getting that big uh, container out of there, uh, that I can imagine would be a chore. Maybe it's meant to never come out because uh, I don't know how you would, you'd have to take out the lights and the frags and the, the cooling fans. That's a fun way to get a refugium in your tank and get the light contained so that your sump doesn't become a refugium in of itself. Looks like someone's in jail. What's with the fish in jail? He's locked in the, the, the sump there, over there in that container. Uh, would love to hear the story about that guy. Sumps are a great place to put fish on timeout if they're causing problems or someone's getting beat up. That's one way to get it done. I have to say, overall with this system, loving the mixed reef nests about it. We've got corals, inverts, big mix of fish. This is about as mixed reef as it gets with an interesting take on a refugium down there in the sump. Look, I would spend all day just staring at this tank. Nice work.